Great, well, we'll get started. Hello, everybody. I'm John Wardle. I'm the director of the National Film and Television School, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this webinar where we're going to look at casting. And um, I'm, you know, thrilled that this event has attracted such interest um, with like over 100 of you attending and loads more signed up for information. So that's that's brilliant. Um, we have an amazing panel in that we're joined by Gina J. And fortunately, everyone has their name tags on on their, on their Zoom boxes. We're, we're, we're joined by Gina J, we're joined by Shaheen Bey, and we're joined by Jane Arnold, all of whom uh, have been involved in the NFTS casting course from the beginning. In fact, it was Gina and Shaheen who brought the idea to the NFTS in the, in the first place, and who also have had a really incredible year because between them, they've had work on our screens, both cinema, VOD, telly, including things like Enola Holmes, The Undoing, which is a personal favourite of mine, Calm With Horses, which is directed and written by NFTS graduates Joe and Nick, and The Third Day, and lots more. So lockdown was largely underpinned by the people we're talking to today. Um, we're also joined by Anna Kitson, who is busily uh, doing the British Sign Language interpretation for this evening. Uh, so thank you to Anna for what for all you're going to do over the next hour. I think you're going to be the person working the hardest. So great to have you here. Um, so Gina, Shaheen and, um, and Jane, we are on the precipice of graduating our first cohort of casting students. And so that's next week at BFI South Bank. So we're going to talk a bit about that and what we've learned from the first cohort and what they've gone on to do. But maybe before we before we talk about the course, let's let's talk a bit about being a casting director. Um, why don't we start off with, again, how each of you uh, kind of got started in the business, because it feels to me that one of the reasons we've started this course is because there was never really a very clear routine. So. Jane, how about you? Why don't you kick us off? How, what was your route into casting? My route was I worked probably when I was still at school in um, an agent's office as a kind of holiday job. And I worked in a theatre as a stage manager as a kind of holiday evening job. And I was really interested in actors from that point. Um, and then I moved on and after university, I worked with an agent, uh, sorry, I worked with a casting director as her assistant. I worked with a series of casting directors as their assistants until I um, ended up going freelance and working on my own. Um, uh, it's, uh, you know, this, I think pretty much the same route as most people, um, at these, well, before the course, in fact, really we training with somebody, working alongside them, learning it inside out over quite a long time until you're able to actually go independent and work on your own. When did you, when did it occur to you that being a casting director might be something you want to do? Was it when you were assisting? When I got paid for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I was always interested in actors. I was always interested in theatre and film. And um, it was just something that was very present I think for me I was always looking at it from an act in from a performance point of view um and that's when I realized that it was something that I could I could do to make a living cool and Gina was that is that a similar story for you or totally different from mm, your Jane's part of my story um <laughs> I, I guess I was doing something else a completely different industry but there were and I fell out of love with it and there were elements and I I looked at a film, um, my best friend, Natasha Wharton had gone to Central and then was out in the film business. She's really smart. And uh, she was on the development, script development side of things. And uh, I realized I'd always sort of loved film but but was realizing it then sort of thing in my in my early mid mid 20s i think and um and so i uh i worked out maybe through natasha also a couple of other people uh wrote to casting direct it was a much sort of smaller yeah, wrote to casting directors and um, ended up 
uh, meeting two who were incredibly significant in my life. One was Jane Arnell, and uh, who was introduced to me by a wonderful agent, um, uh, who I was introduced to by a wonderful agent at the time. And, uh, and the other one was Patsy Pollock. And yeah. And what attracted you to casting? Was it the actors again or film? Yeah, there was an element of that that I'd done in my previous kind of like it was just a but it yeah it wasn't actors but it was people and uh portrait and just yeah and uh yes actors but I had a hell of a lot to learn and I did that with Jane and Patsy very quietly did a lot of observation um didn't have much of a a voice, I think Jane will, yeah, you know, just uh, observed a lot. And uh, also it was, uh, Jane and Patsy were really amazing people, but it was, it was, it was great, but it was also, I was gonna say it was also quite classical in terms of, I don't know, the roots into the business and yeah. So, but uh, yeah. Uh, really good, rigorous training. I think I did that uh, not on and off, but I did that between these two casting directors for probably five years, um, and and then uh, yeah, and then a director asked me to cast a short, something like that. What about you, Shahid? Well, I'm connected to both of them because they're both part of my story. Um, so I sort of came to it in a slightly roundabout way. I was working for a producer um, and sort of come into the end of that and knew that I wanted to work in the film industry, but I didn't know what in what department. Um, visuals were always my thing, but sort of coming from photography and that was my passion and wasn't and, and filmmakers. So it wasn't specifically actors when I first came into it. And then by pure chance, um, I heard that a casting director was looking for an assistant who was Debbie McWilliams. And I went to meet her and she took a punt on me. I think probably because I had the massive love of European cinema and a lot of, you know, casting James Bond is, you know, looking at European actors. So um, she took a punt. And then I, you know, and then I worked with Debbie and Gina for a, a really long time and Jane and it sort of, massively influenced I think probably some of the projects I do now and my taste but I certainly I sort of came into casting just through a passion a love of film and a love of visuals and then I unearthed a kind of passion for actors. It seems to me that um, I mean so many young people who want to get and, and older people who want to get involved in film and television but they're not sure of their route in. And it feels to me like 50% of making your start is to know where you might want to get to. And so mm -hmm. knowing you might want to work in casting rather than just film generally actually becomes quite an important kind of gateway you have to go through. So interesting how you all found your way in. Um, so in terms of your work now, um, can you, Break down the process for me. As an outsider, because I'm not a casting director, I run a film school. As an outsider, I, I, it feels to me like I see two sorts of things happen. One is I see open casting calls put online. I'm assuming that there's another type of casting where you're making offers directly to actors. Uh, how, how does the breakdown, to, to talk to us kind of how it works and, and the, the actual process of casting a, a film from your, from your perspective? Who wants to start us off? Shaheen, you go. <laughs> What's the um, stuff? Well, it, it, it really varies. I mean, I work mostly in independent cinema, so it's probably a slightly different um, journey to working on a more like a studio film. But essentially, you start off, obviously, you start with script. Um, and then often there's a, you know, there's a lead or there's a couple of lead roles that you focus on to start off with. So that is a, is a series of conversations, discussions with the director, the producer, sometimes the writer, sometimes the financier is a part of that conversation. Um, and you're sort of honing lists, you're discussing ideas, and then you sort of work 
that to a, you get that down to a short list. And often, if you're you know, if you're approaching people, you know, big stars, then you're making offers. Um, if if there's no requirement whatsoever to, um, to 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 put someone in the lead who is a star, then it's a process of um, doing ideas, um, you know, doing auditions and chemistry tests. So it's a slight. It, it depends on what is is needed for the leads of your film. Um, when would you when would you make the decision? When I see those kind of adverts, casting adverts, I see them sometimes on your Twitter feeds. When when are you making the decision that you're actually going to go out beyond the names you might already know? Um, I think it depends on what the search, what the character is, where that character comes from. If that character has specific skills that are needed, um, you you know you you sort of then have to kind of go, okay, is this something that already exists, absolutely exists in the system, or do we have to look outside of the system? Um, I think generally for lead roles, you're, you know, you're working within a system unless you're trying to find somebody that is very hard to find in the, in, in the industry, in yeah. the system. And, and Gina, it, it's, is it fair to say, you come on quite early in the process because sometimes it's those lead roles that actually get the project greenlit is that fair to yeah say? definitely um yeah i'd say we're probably the hod head of department who comes on the earliest and works with the producer sorry works with the director and the producer or producers and sometimes with a, a production company or a studio sort of sitting or a network or streaming platform sitting behind that, and they are all producers, uh, different types of producers. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I can come, I don't know. Yeah, it can take uh, years sometimes, but um, that's just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Because you yeah. like, you guys might get attached to a project where they're trying to get it greenlit and the actors are a part of that, but they've got other building blocks to put in place before the thing's going to get made. Is that yeah, definitely. And also sometimes there's a I, I don't know that the material or maybe the ideas, the themes, the what the story is trying to say doesn't necessarily chime with the world and actually sometimes uh, things being slow for other reasons to do with money falling out, to do with maybe director leaving, not abandoning a project, but leaving it and maybe coming back, he or she coming back to it later, the same with producers that, but there is that thing. Do you not agree, Shaheen? Sometimes the material, it's, it can be exceptional. It can be great, but it's, it's just, off. Yeah, and often we can come on when it's a book, you know, it hasn't been adapted to a script yet. It can be a sort of synopsis, you know, quite often, you know, we come on so early, especially if we've got a relationship with that director or with that writer or something, we come on so early. So often the casting process early on can be part of shaping the material. Um, and, you know, from what we read from day one to what we read when we're actually actively doing auditions, the material can, can change shape, the script can change shape, because often sometimes talking about actors can have an influence on how a script sometimes is being developed. And is it fair to say that the world has changed a bit in that film and TV both were quite separate things and now you will work seamlessly across both? Is that, is that our new reality? And how does theatre fit into that? I don't know if I ever work seamlessly. <laughs> <laughs> Try to, but I don't. Um, yeah, definitely. It's sort of, uh, yeah, the same. Uh, yeah, they were very, I, I felt very separate worlds, not for everyone, but, but in the main, very separate worlds. And that, that applied to crew and cast, so in front of the camera and behind the camera. Yeah. And now that's not true. I uh, there's lots of amazing, yeah. But I guess money, and um, you can, yeah, just what may 
potentially be earned. So in relation to top talent that was exclusive to film, um, yeah. I don't know. But you used to sort of just be in your lane of film, television or theatre. And now that is blurred. You know, there, and there are people who work specifically in theatre, um, but there are, the, you know, there are cast and directors going back between film and theatre. So it's all much more fluid now, which is great. And is, from your perspective, is it the same process or is there, is there any key differences between film and TV and how you work on them? Uh, it's the same. It's not the same, but it's the same process in the... I, uh, and I'm assuming it's the same for Shaheen, I didn't really work in television for a long time. And I don't know, I, I, I seem to very, it's not that it's natural, but I just, yeah, I seem to push off on a uh, path that was exclusively film, but it, it actually, was film directors who I'd worked with on film for the big yeah. screen who brought me into TV. I'm very grateful. So they were very attracted by material, the idea that actually to have, I don't know, to take a book and actually not distill that into a two hour experience or whatever, but actually to allow the, the 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 I can't think of the right word of the book to uh, to play out over six hours with uh, and have an extraordinary have a great writer sort of in the background that that became that was a thing that became very attractive I felt to um, a filmmaker who wanted to tell stories but do it in a different way. Yeah. It was and, yeah. It's, it's exactly the same. It's sort of working in film, and then some of those directors I was working with were, were starting to make television, and so then it was a kind of you know then you get sort of transferred from one world to another. I think theatre works slightly differently, just in a practical sense, in how they might run sessions and things. But we're all looking at the same actors. And is it? It's a longer engagement, I assume, because if you're doing a ten-part TV show, you're probably just you're beginning to film, are you, before you've cast to episodes eight, nine, ten, or or is it different every time? It depends. I think it depends on how much you have in advance. So it depends if you have a complete set of scripts in advance, which is rare. I think if you have, if it's a you know multi-episodic show, yeah. um, but often you are you're still you're nursing a project over the whole duration because schedules change, scripts change. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, you can be on right through to the end in some cases. Yeah. Right. Let's let's shift angles. So we talked a bit about being a casting director in the world of casting directors. Let's talk a bit about what qualities you need to be successful. So, Jane, maybe you could kick us off. What are the, you know, the things you've worked with? And you work with Gina. Uh, yes. <laughs> she worked for you. Well, I worked what for Jane. Yeah. Yeah. What, are the things, yeah. what are the things that you you think make somebody kind of a good fit with this world? Well, Gina is, is particular because she had an extraordinary, having really very little experience, she came in and had the most extraordinary focus and uh, was on, able to articulate something that was quite complicated, uh, which just suggested that she had a really deep engagement with it. And there are a lot of people skipping about saying, oh, casting, it must be fun, which, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was not the attitude, but she was she was particular in that way, and not there aren't many people with those qualities. But generally, I think um, focus, commitment, drive, um, concentration, um, flexibility, <laughs> and really understanding that you have to dig deep, or you have to dig down into a project, and you also have to take your time and learn. So we're looking for people who don't just want uh, to be casting directors overnight. You need, you, it's a long process and to actually understand exactly the balance of the industry and how we fit in and what we do takes time in addition to expanding your knowledge, of course, of actors and the protocols and the etiquettes and how to speak to agents and how to um, persuade people <laughs> to make the right decision. That's all, the not you, 
all the things you said at the beginning were kind of personal qualities. And I get the sense that that's actually really, that's a really key part of being successful in this area. But are there any kind of, I hate soft skills, hard skills, but are there any really hard skills you've got to have? You know, do you have to be good with numbers or? Well, these days, some of the hard skills are, are quite defined. So in the past, you know, um, when Gina and I were working together, you know, a long time ago now, we, nobody uploaded anything, you know, we didn't have nothing, that did not exist. But now as an assistant, you have got to learn how to, to do all of that. There's so many more digital skills you have to know. Um, you, have to be, you have to be able to use your computer. You know, you've got you've got to be literate um, in that way. Uh, hard skills, being interested in reading, is that a hard skill? I don't know, but actually having having an ability to read and read a script yeah. is really important. Um, being good at maths, well, it helps, but not everybody is good at maths. And actually, you know, as you go on, your skills improve as you do more and more deals. It helps, but it's not it's not the be or your instinct is important, but that's definitely not a hard skill. Um, but the tech skills are, are important these days, it yeah. has to be said, but you can improve them and you can learn yeah. what, what you have. To, I mean, that's part of what we're doing on the course as well is helping people to understand what they need to be able to do. And those tech skills, are they things like being able to make an, an advert for Twitter or being able to film an audition and Yes. And to a digital file and we transfer that to somebody. It's that sort of thing that you Absolutely. Can. You've got to be able you've got to be able to do all those things. You've got to be able to know how to film an audition. You've got to know what to do with the material you filmed. You've got to understand how long it takes to download it and upload it and send it and cut it. You might need to snag a scene to show a director somebody's work, which perhaps you don't want necessarily to send the show reel, so you may be editing. So yes, there are lots of there are lots of tech skills in that way, and making picture tables, um, yeah. all those things that. There's like all the admin in the office, which is the organisational stuff, which is huge. Yeah, all the emails and diary management and stuff like that. Um, and so we've talked a bit about what you the kind of qualities you need. And by the way, people who are watching, there's 150 people watching. Um, one person has already found the Q&A box. Do feel free to put questions in there and I'll come to them towards the end. There's a good one there already. Um, so, Gina Shaheen, you approached me and Chris, my colleague Chris um, a couple of years ago and said, we want to do this. What, what was it that drove you to seek us out and say, we should start a course in this? Why was it important to you two to do this? Um, well, Gina, I mean, Gina and I talked about it a lot, and I think it's really, you know, it's like with all aspects of the industry, it's making it far more representative, making it more visible, making people understand that casting is a career. It's, it, it, it's a department, and, and I think that there are lots of other departments that are much more visible, and people can see a clearer path to, and Certainly when I, I didn't really know anything about casting, really, until I was working in the industry for a producer. And then it, then I fell into it by chance. So it's that, it's that it is also, it's accessible, you know, sometimes casting, casting can feel like a little bit of a closed shop, you know, and that gets, that, that sort of, you know, gets sort of uh, said a lot. And, you know, certainly when I, first started the only other person that I met that that looked like me was Gina you know that's you know so it's sort of it's to make the, the for me it was to make it much more open much more accessible much more representative um and also to to, to educate people about what it is what we do yeah I remember on that side of things, on the educating people on what it is you do, I remember sitting down with you both at the beginning and saying, oh, what might we cover? And, oh, we could probably do it in just a few weeks. And then the list slowly <laughs> grew all the things that we needed to cover. Um, so we're in this, we, did a talk, we did a talk like this a year ago, and we were talking about this as a thing that was going to happen. We've now done it, and they're all about to finish next week, which is very exciting. So... Maybe Jane, do you want to tell us a bit about the shape of the course and what what happens on it? Who, you know, what what was the first run of the course like? Well, we were we were planning obviously to meet once a week 
on a Wednesday evening in Golden Square and, um, and continue in that way for two terms, because of course the pandemic prevented that. Um, we were really fortunate that we had four weeks of in-person teaching. And then we, because we're really keen to make sure that we get as many students who aren't necessarily based in London as possible, we, we're, we want to reach out all over. Um, that, that included, you know, people had to travel. So we uh, started to teach online, which in fact turned out to be extremely successful in a way that we possibly wouldn't have anticipated. Um, with it, it, it enabled us to have many more guest speakers for, for a longer period than perhaps they would have been able to do or commit to if they were coming to, to talk to us in person. Um, and we covered two terms. Uh, we have a, had a very intense final assignment where they have to do a, an authentic assignment doing almost all the stages of a project in a quite a short space of time. And most of the students are working during the day. So it's a lot about time management as well. Um, and some of the students now have continued, as you know, to work um, slightly on an experimental basis on some of your first year um, yeah. fortune directors films. So they're getting a really good taste of the practical, administrative, day to day work with glorious guest speakers who come and actually shine light on on the creative side of the whole process and and reveal secrets, which perhaps you know, it's a, it's a hugely, a huge privilege to hear some of these people speak. And now some of them are getting experience actually in the room, um, casting with the first year directors. I mean, we must point out, this is a course that is going to prepare people to be casting assistants, to then go into an office and to learn. Yeah. You're not going to come in and six months later, come out like Gina and Shaheen, you know, but you can you can be on your way. I hope is you'll do maybe get further faster because you're just that bit more prepared I guess. I think you will I mean as, as we said earlier you know extraordinarily 50% of the course has already got placed in really good <laughs> jobs with really good casting directors which um, has been amazing amazing I mean it's all happening now. And you've had, you had guest speakers like Jan Demange did a session I think and didn't Philippa do a set Philippa Lothrop yeah. session, auditioning how, how tell us a bit about get bring alive maybe a couple of the sessions what, what kind of things they did. Well I'll let Shaheen talk about about Philippa, but just to say, they, we set up a collaboration with the National Youth Theatre and worked very closely with them for a couple of weeks. And the young actors who are now doing their shows um, were then very lucky to be to have a workshop session with Philippa, who Shaheen had just worked with. I'll let her talk about that. Yeah, it was in an, in, in an, and ordinarily we would have done that in real life. We would have done it in a space and um, run auditions, but. We did it on Zoom, it worked really well, actually. And so the students got to, to see the actors reading a piece of script and then Philippa would give them notes and then they would, you know, they would do it again. And, and then, you know, we would do, Philippa and I would then discuss their read. So it was like, they got to see a, a casting session take place. And they previously had set up self tapes. So they got, you know, yeah. They, the, the young actors had set up self tapes, which are which are young casting, well, our emerging casting director yeah. assistants um, watched and yeah, really amazing analysed. Mm. And who, how many how many students were there on the course, and where did they come from? Well, there were supposed to be twelve, and we and we we, we <laughs> had fourteen. We had fourteen because it was irresistible. I remember um, you all saying to me, "We can't have more than 12, John." And then I think it was Gina and Shaheed from back to me said, "We really must take fourteen because they're very good." Well, I think we wanted to see whether there was enough room in socially yeah, distanced yeah, room yeah, to yeah. take the team. Uh, it was, we, there were more, there were some extremely good applicants last year and actually we could have gone to 20, but we can't get to 20. We have to, we, we will stick between 12 and 14 again this year, um, I think, but they're from all over. We have three, two who live in Leeds, uh, one who is in Scotland, um, one who was in Liverpool, who is now based in London because he has a full-time job as a casting assistant, made the move. Um, somebody in Stoke, um, and most of the rest are in London, but aren't necessarily from London. So and it's a good range. That's my final question, and I'm going to turn, I'm not to almost 30 audience questions, so I'll come to those in a second. Um, what have, so we haven't yet finished the course uh, in informally next week, as I keep saying, but what we already know some of them have got jobs. So can you talk a little bit about what they've got, what, what people are landing, what they're going on to do? 
Um, Maybe don't need to tell us the places. I can. I'm not, I, am I allowed to do that? I'm, well, I think I can. Time. Maybe not the places, but you can say, are they getting jobs as casting assistants? They're getting no. jobs as casting assistants. Two of them have got jobs at uh, major London theatres, independent, one independent theatre, one, um, one very large well-known theatre, uh, <laughs> as casting assistants. Um, um, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say on this. That's a, that's a good flavor. Um, and then some, you know, some have got freelance yeah. work with casting yeah. directors across film and television. Yeah. So yeah. And several of them have got full time work with very senior casting directors as their assistants, and they've gone in to an open uh, on an open field. You know, they've been interviewed and they've had to get that work against. Right. Uh, opposition you know they haven't just been given the jobs they've all had to interview they've all had to prove their worth and several of them who've been you know um one I think we can say this that one of our um students who did some work experience which is the other thing we need to talk about I guess um with Aisha Bywater has continued to work for her since she went in and did that work I mean that's an extremely immediate and successful placement <laughs> um and, you know, and Shaheen and Gina have also been incredibly generous about giving um, remote work experience to people and giving them experience after, after the course is finished as well. Um, Do you want to talk about that briefly, maybe, Gina and Shaheen, and I mean, how that works, and then I'll come to the audience questions. Um, uh, well, all the students were given, um, it was part of the course that we would sort out, and we did, and, and um, yeah. And our casting director colleagues were incredibly generous and a lot of casting directors committed to uh, work placements that was part of uh, because of COVID uh, some of that was in person and some of it was remote and uh, and yeah I, uh, yeah my office has certainly we have uh, we've loved all of the casting cohort every single one of them and uh yeah there have been freelance jobs in relation to coming in being a junior as like a a really junior assistant working at that kind of it's the sort of yeah the foundation and um they've come in on a freelance basis since Christmas I guess or since yeah since January February and have done x amount of full-time as in weekly but 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 like chunks four weeks two weeks yeah and right. it's the yeah and they've actually been great they, they've kind of some people have been able to do a week some have done a couple of days it, I think it was difficult difficult because obviously during the course some offices weren't fully up and running and some were, but I think um, even if somebody only got a placement for like a couple of days or a week in an office, it was really valuable. Yeah. Cool. Right, let's, we better turn to these audience questions because I'm gonna, we're gonna drown in them otherwise we've got 34. So the first one is, I've been working as a casting assistant for one year and a half and I was wondering if you'd still recommend this course, even if I already have the experience of a casting assistant. Who wants to take that? Um, hmm. it's probably is it less, <laughs> it's a bit less useful for somebody like that because they're already on their way or I guess it depends where in what office they're working and what what their experience to date has been yeah but I'd say if they've been doing it for a year and a half then they're getting their experience they're already in it they're doing it yeah yeah but then if they've been working for a great commercials costing director you're not reading the film agreements or the TV agreements or being exposed to that. So, and the course is quite rigorous. There's a lot of expectation in relation to learning and uh, knowing your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I suppose if, yeah, if they're in a different area of casting that's not necessarily film and television theatre, then, then it would potentially be useful. Yeah, and as we've said, it's, it's giving you, you'll get a broader range because that's what a great thing about courses, isn't it? You encounter stuff that you might not encounter as a casting assistant straight away. Um, Amy's got a question. How can you become a casting assistant without prior experience? What's important to put in the cover letter when I apply? 
Good question. Is, this, is the question about how, about joining the course yeah, or it's about, to get I, into the industry without joining the course? Well, I, think she, no, I think she's keen on the course, but she's saying, if I've got no experience, how do I demonstrate that I'm a good candidate? You have to show that you're interested in story, you're interested in performance, you're watching a lot, you've got a critical eye, you're across the tech, uh, and that you're willing to listen and learn. But, and it's a terrible old cliche, and we all tell everybody not to write, I am passionate about in any covering letter, but somehow you've got to show that you are really keen on it. And you are really, really embedded in the industry. You love film or you love theater. And what is it, what it, you know, you've got to be, I think, hungry to do it. I always say on that sort of thing that it's about turning that, it's okay to say I'm passionate about film, but maybe tell us how yeah. that manifests. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, do you go to the theatre and do you check out people on IMD? It's all that sort of thing. How do you make it active? Um, but it is, uh, it is very difficult to, to, to penetrate the industry. It's very hard and you just have to keep plugging away, you know, really. But it's certainly the case that people with no experience got on the first cohort. People Entirely. Yeah, right. exactly. Entirely. No, we, 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 what we were trying to, to open this open entry into the industry up to people who wouldn't normally have access to it exactly, yeah. so we're extremely keen to find people who want have a commitment to it are really interested in the process but don't have the the normal you know i don't mean normal i mean the way that is easy to get into it yeah. we're um, very open we have all sorts of ages in the first cohort as well we did. We went from 19 to, to somebody who has two children, grown-up children. So we covered a good range. Cool. So somebody asked a good question. How saturated is the casting side of the industry, in your opinion? How, how, many people, how competitive is it in that space? Is it 10 people applying for every single one job? Um, I think it's, fa it's fairly competitive. Definitely. And also... It, you know, it's not just people who are working in casting when a casting director advertises for a job. It's often people that from other aspects of the industry want to move over into casting. So I think it is pretty competitive. Yeah. Um, this, is a, this is a bit of a term, but it's a good question. How amazing does it feel casting someone who hasn't done anything before as a lead, if this is something you've been able to do? basically when you can offer a role to someone which is potentially career and life-changing. Have you got memories of doing that, you guys? I'm sure there is. <laughs> Must be amazing. That, that's the best thing about, I mean, that's one of the loveliest things about the job. I mean, because then you're, you know, you're kick-starting someone's career and it's a, it's a privilege, really, to do that. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be the lead. I mean, it's wonderful to no. Ask people doing their first job at all, you know, giving them giving them a spot is a great feeling. Um, Tiana says, do you always get sent full scripts to work with at the beginning or only sides that are required for the auditions? You don't mm -hmm. get the full script, would you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Pretty hard. Pretty that's hard. How, yeah, that's how we decide if we want to. It's either, because like we were saying earlier, it's either a script or it's a book or it's a synopsis. That's how we decide if we want to work on something. Yeah. Tiana, it sounds like you also do acting. Somebody says, do you think it's a good idea or possible to pursue in two industry jobs at once, say writing and casting or acting and casting? Whoa, that's greedy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's not acting, a good... I think we've said... Acting and casting, no. Yeah. yeah. Acting I, and casting, absolutely not. Yeah. But, yeah. I, but there is that thing, yeah. It's some <laughs> actors also have a storyteller inside them and they are really smart writers and also they write brilliantly for themselves and stay in control of that if they're if they're talented enough and and have a support system around them that allows them to uh, tell stories on the big or small screen 
This is a good one. Do you think that working for cast assist, casting directors will remain online remotely? I've seen a lot of work over lockdown that's been done like this. In Liverpool, where I'm from, there aren't many casting directors in my area. So that's what we want to attract, don't we? Um, candidates from all over the UK, of all sorts, all ages, all ethnic kind of diversity. Yeah. But the reality is there may not be much many casting directors in Liverpool or Glasgow. So how, how have the students on the course balanced that? Um, well, I think there's an in increasing um, interest in, in making work outside London. And I think that, you know, we all know that, you know, we're, the, the, the sort of London centric focus is trying to be shifted, isn't it, quite considerably. And I think Liverpool does have casting directors. But yes, if you're if you're if you want to be an assistant, you have a decision to make. And one of our students is two of our students are based in Leeds. They've both found work in Leeds um, as casting assistants, um, one working remotely and the other working in person for a Leeds based uh, casting director. So. Um, Again, our, you know, the, the, the uh, student who was from Liverpool, uh, although I think he's interested in the end and taking it back to Liverpool at the moment, he's very keen to move to London and to learn as much as he can from the industry down here. So he's moved down because he's got work. Um, so I think, I think there's, there are opportunities. And I think if you're interested in casting, it actually doesn't matter where you live at the moment. You need to think about, uh, you know, the burgeoning opportunities all over the countryside, I think. And also there's lots of, you know, regionally, there's, you know, there's, there's gaming, there's commercials, there's all kinds of different forms of casting that isn't so London centric. There's theatre, you know, there's regional theatre. So I think, you know, that it should be, it should just keep pushing out, pushing out because, of, you know, it has up until quite recently been very London focused. So it's, yeah. And it's fair to say, isn't it, that in Cardiff, for example, we're opening a hub in Cardiff, that there's a big focus on only working with people who are in Wales, you know, and that actually that's that's definitely the direction of, of travel now, is those hubs not lifting crews in, but working with local teams. So I think this is a good moment, really. Um, somebody, this is nice. First of all, thank you for creating this course, as there is no casting course or degree out there. I know you will keep saying age is not a factor, but realistically, is taking up a casting course at the age of 40 feasible in terms of how long it takes to make it in the casting sector? I saw Shaheen nodding. Yeah, I think it's absolutely feasible. I mean, definitely. It's, it, I guess it's just about what you, what point you're at in your life, what you, how, you know, what, how you can survive, what you can manage. Um, and, you know, in, you know, and offices are starting to sort of operate in slightly different ways. Um, you know, some offices, you know, they do job shares, you know, and I think the sort of the online nature of some, how some offices are operating at the moment is potentially a good thing. But, um, you know, of course, you know, when you're coming in at entry level, a lot of the work is, you know, you are having to go to the theatre and go to the cinema and do a lot of, you know, all of that groundwork. And, Obviously, sometimes when you're older, you've got other commitments. But um, I think if you're really passionate about it and want to sort of make it work, you'll find a way to make it work. And, and one of the important things is the course is part time, isn't it? And yeah. that, means that people can continue to work and earn money in their, in their normal life if they need to, while they work out whether this is going to be a viable route for them. It is part time, but it would be it would be disingenuous to pretend it isn't rigorous it's hard i've done i've done two part-time courses and part-time study is always much harder than full-time <laughs> study it, it's uh, hard yeah, if you've got a family it's life super not, organized focus i think yeah i mean there is there's preparation because you're not going to get the best out of a, a guest speaker's um, session with you if you don't know about their career so there's a lot of lot of obviously watching film and um, researching people's work reading articles about them reading articles they've written themselves or interviews they've had then there are tasks we do have tasks for people to do independently to consolidate what we've been talking about and that's you know if that's writing a breakdown creating a character you know character breakdown breaking down a script as though you're filleting a fish so that you know exactly how it works and that when you haven't done that before that takes a long time 
you know, once you're at the end of this course, you'll suddenly realize you can do it much more quickly. Um, but it, there, it, it, there is there is work to be done. It's not just a three hour session and, and then that's the end until next week. Let's crash through some of the courses quick because there's now 46 questions. How long is the course? <laughs> How much does it cost? How many places are on it? The course is at the moment 24 weeks, but I think we are looking, aren't we, at extending it to about 28. Um, it's going to be over it, at the moment it's over two terms but it might that last bit might stretch but we haven't actually got the dates confirmed yet or exactly how we're going to do it uh, it's this year it was three thousand four hundred and fifty pounds but I don't know whether that would change that would be the same I think but, it, but there, and there are scholarships available aren't there so the important thing to say is we do have scholarships and bursaries available um for a number of students yes so that should not if people don't have the money that shouldn't prevent them from applying because we are um, very keen to provide scholarships where we can and there's 12 to 14 places depending on ish is what we're talking about yeah ish. <laughs> <laughs> um it, lo there's lots of questions in here which we get every time which is is the course worth doing as an actor should I do it just to find out more about the casting process as an actor? And I think the answer is no, isn't it? That's the key thing to say. That would be a waste of a place for somebody. The answer is no, but that's not to say that actors who are committed to casting don't become extremely successful casting directors. So yeah. we have had on this course somebody who uh, had two people who, or three people, who had trained as actors but had decided to stop acting and then were accepted onto the course because they wanted to become casting directors. But it's not a course just to satisfy your interest into what casting is and then to carry on acting, sadly. This is for people who want to be casting directors. And a good question here from some, a couple of questions from people based in Scotland saying, um, is it feasible to travel? How much travelling down would there be? And how much of it's online? And, and, and I guess that's, that's something that we planned for it to be fully face-to-face -face in person last time, didn't we? And we ended up doing more of it online. And the plan is for it to be a mix next yeah. time. The plan is, is, is for it to be a mix and, and to try and support people who, if they've come from as far as Scotland or Cornwall or somewhere where you couldn't possibly do it, yeah. uh, to try and support people to be able to do that and yeah. to come down and stay. for. And giving for people plenty of notice about right. what those times are and, and, and all, all that sort of stuff. The plan. Yeah, yeah. It would be very structured. I mean, everybody would know when they were coming. Um. What's the most difficult part of being a casting director? <laughs> Gosh, there it is. Um, and she wants to go first. I feel like we're all going to have completely different. <laughs> you all got long lists. <laughs> it's really, really hard work. You know, it's long hours. It can be, you know, it can be stressful. You're often in. Um, you know, you're very, very involved in whether a film is going to get, get financed, it's going to get greenlit or not. You're absolutely part of that process. Um, but it's also incredibly rewarding. So, it, you know, it's, and, and if you're the casting director, then you're carrying a huge amount. Um, but it's also, you know, I feel very, very lucky to do the job that I do. And I could never have ever imagined that I would be doing this as a career. Yeah. So I sort of feel like there's lots of things I could be doing where I would be, you know, it would be a job. It would just be a job and I go home at the end of the day and that's that and I'd leave it behind. But it's, my job is all consuming. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be really committed, I think. There's a deadline every day. It's not like you're working to one deadline at the end of the month. It's, a, the, it's deadline driven. And somebody, yeah. Somebody says, is the course achievable for people who are in full-time work? And I think lots of the students were last year, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, do you need equal knowledge of theatre as well as film and TV? No. You could, so did lots of the students have particular passion areas where they were particularly interested in television rather than theatre? So 
we had one uh we have one student in particular who was um very very interested in the film had been working um in film to a certain extent not in casting in any way and had been trying to get into casting and just couldn't uh and she discovered through the course that she was really really interested in theater and she is one of our students who has got this um full-time job in a major theater um starting in june so yes you can you can find a new you can discover a new interest um application deadline is in mid-june so when approximately would interviews be held in july i think yeah and it's the deadline's the 24th of june isn't it yeah. so it'll be definitely be two or three weeks from that point i would think yes it will well we've had so many applications <laughs> last time it took us a very long time to get through them all um i think and we actually haven't discussed this but i suspect we will do zoom interviews again yeah um yeah, that worked quite well, I think. It did work very well. So if, you know, if you're, if they, people want to go on holiday to Cornwall, um, we can still interview you. Yeah. There's lots of questions. That it's quite encouraging. There's questions from people here who are maybe at sixth form or finishing school and they're saying... Fantastic. When is it too, is it too early to be thinking about doing this at that age? It's not, is it? It's something you both, it's something you're all quite passionate about is people coming in at that young age as well. Very keen, very keen. I think it, it because as G, uh, Gina had said, you know, lots of people don't even realise it it exists as a as a career, as Shaheen said too. You know, so uh, we're very keen to talk to people who have just come straight from school. And I know it's very unusual for the film school to have people um, who aren't already twenty one, but I think for this course, we are very, we're open to certainly to talking to people. Absolutely. Um, and then I've got to read this one out because although we've answered it, it says I've waited a year for this Zoom exclamation mark. It's incredibly <laughs> fascinating hearing from these goddesses in the industry. Is she, do you think she's talking about me or, or you Definitely. guys? I think it's not you, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also <laughs> thrilled to see casting is now being recognised as an award about blooming time. I started my application last year, but I still worry I might be too old now. I'm 34. The really... Um, at both the younger age and kind of people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, it's really not too late, is it? You can come on this course and, and make your way. Absolutely. It's, a, it's a, a quality of a person we're looking for. We don't, we're not interested in that people's age. If you've got the right attitude and you are committed to it and you, you know, we are very, very keen to interview people, whatever their age. I think we should wrap up there. A lot of the other questions were about um, were <laughs> actor side of things, so we'll, we'll we'll leave those. But oh, actually, somebody asked a good question. Why is it just to follow through on a point that you made? Why is it not necessarily a good idea for an actor to work as a casting assistant if they want to still be an actor? Why does that get complicated? They can work as a casting assistant. You can work as a casting assistant as a free, uh, you know, as a free as a freelance job. But if you want to become a casting director and Coming on this course That's is great. helping you to become a casting assistant with a view to like maybe being a casting associate or eventually becoming a casting director. Um, it, it, is, it doesn't work with being an actor at the same time. You can't have both, you can't be on both sides of the camera. Yeah. Because it is a conflict of interest, isn't it? Definitely. It's sort of, yeah. Because yeah. you keep slipping your headshot into the pile. <laughs> Um, listen, thank you so much for taking an hour out to answer all those questions. I think that was tremendously helpful. And I always like doing these with you guys because it gives me a chance to say a big public thank you for all you do to make this course happen. Um, Jane runs the course on a kind of day-to-day -day basis, but Gina and Shaheen give so much energy and passion and love really to the course. So a massive thank you to both of you for all you, all you continue to do for it. Um, I can objectively say this because I don't teach on the course, I do run the school that it's in, but this is a great course and I think it meets a really valuable industry need and really tries to create a kind of open space that people of talent and, you know, focus can make their way into the industry. And as Jane alluded to earlier, 50% of students have already done that from a standing start there now getting jobs and making their way through. So I can't wait to see uh, what we build over the next 10 years or so of kind of people who make their way through and hopefully become become casting directors. Well, so thanks, thanks. Jo 
Yeah, yeah I was going to say thanks. thanks to you, John, and Chris Orty, just yeah. whenever that was, back in 2018, for uh, just welcoming Shaheen and I and then Jane. Yeah, the home of this course, it's been great. I also wanted to add just on Jane, you said about the three actors just for the actors and we do love actors, but the, uh, the three students who came onto this current cohort and are graduating and had trained as actors, I think it's three, it may even be four, all of them are committed to this industry behind the camera and I think three of them are actively they're working in casting and have been hired haven't they Jane they like, have yeah we can't Jane's not allowed to say anything about it because we have to get permissions about the homes we're not going to name students but the homes that some of the cohort this year's cohort where they are going and Jane is right it's really impressive what has so, happened yeah. with this cult and these yeah. students who would have otherwise you know they may have found their way there but it would have taken longer and Definitely. it really it made a connection between established companies and places and casting directors and real talent so it's yeah great i think we should say just because i wouldn't want to raise anybody anybody's expectation we are, we're not placing people from this course ourselves in these jobs mm. they are applying for these jobs yeah. and they are getting them on their own merits yeah you know what i mean they're not it's not a it, it's it's not there's nothing about us doing it they the students are doing it themselves cool well it's been it's been a great success very excited about cohort two the second cohort of students oh, cohort two. well this is <laughs> i was going to say this is our 50th anniversary year this year it's always worth saying that in the second cohort of students at the NFTS, Roger Deakins was in that group because he got rejected in the first cohort. So it's good to be in cohort <laughs> two. Uh, uh, <laughs> so um, I hope we'll see lots of applications. The deadline's the 24th of June. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to email info at nfts.co.uk. And again, a massive thank you to Gina, Shaheen and Jane for everything you've done for the course, but also for taking an hour out tonight and thank you Anna uh, our BSL interpreter Thanks, for, Anna. you've worked the thank hardest you, Anna. cool thank you very much everybody thanks Brilliant. for Bye. thank Cheers. you Bye. 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 Bye.